Hello makers! So, it's another kind of vlog, but this is a project vlog. So, I have a lot of projects, a lot of ideas that I want to execute. And I've decided that in a day, maybe two days, I have to do a project. And I want to recall the whole process. Now, this right here next to me is a food dehydrator. It's like 45 bucks. It's perfect for drying out filaments. But um, while it works really well, the problem Malta is it's very humid here. So even though I, I, I put a spool in here for like 12 hours, it starts printing great, but then it degrades very quickly. Even if I leave it in an enclosed spool, it still doesn't last me that long uh, because of the relatively high humidity here. So what I want to do is I want to turn this this $45 thing, which is relatively cheap, into a an active dehydrating spool holder. So here's the idea. Have two spools sitting in here, sort of like freely rotating while filament is fed out into the printer. So it's going to be an inexpensive fix, something that should work, something that is not very complicated, and it should do the trick. So I'm, I'm gonna show you a bit of a sketch because it's always important to sort of like sketch out what you want to do um, and tell you exactly what I have in mind. So this is the base of the food dehydrator. It has like a little slot going up here, which is a little bit too big for a spool folder, uh, for a spool holder to fit in. And what I want to do is simply make a base that fits in there. Like something like that. Have a tower that goes in so the spool holder can fit in there. That's slightly smaller. Okay, so basically a spool would fit in here. Then I want to do the exact same thing over here. Just something that would fit in on top. Now keep in mind that I there's no need for bearings in this whatsoever. It's it's not going to carry a lot of weight. Oh god, that is this is not to scale just in case. But yeah, you get the idea. And another spool holder that would fit on top. Now, I don't want to use bearings because I don't want the spool um, to sort of like roam around freely and untangle themselves. So this should create enough friction for the spool just to have enough to be able to pull out filament slowly and just and just sit in place. Now, I kind of want to take it a step further. So this would be a side view. Now, I also have another idea. So this would be the top view. It's actually not a bad circle. So once you have the spool or the spools inside, I don't want it to just exit the, uh, the dehumidifier. Now, the reason is when you put a spool into a dehumidifier, you leave it there for like 10 or 12 hours. And what happens is since the spool is like fully wound up to maybe here would be perfectly dry. But there's so much so it's it's so insulated in here it doesn't really dry it up and i know that if you use like two meters worth of filament 13 minutes is enough to dry it out because there is nothing sort of constraining the the uh, the heat that's going to dry it out so what i want to do is i want to create kind of like little hooks everywhere or everywhere like in four corners of the uh, the humidifier the dehydrator keep calling it the humidifier. So what will happen is you unspool one filament goes through here, here, there, there, and exits through here. Now that might seem complicated, but the idea here is you have about one meter worth of filament before it exits here. That's just sitting freely and kind of like having an accelerated um, dehydration process because it's it's not connected to anything else so that should be like extremely dry and that would keep on unspooling itself going around all these four corners before exiting and going to a printer now there would be two on top of each other one for the top spool and since my I can uh, hold two spools the other one would exit the opposite direction so it would be the same thing, but underneath, but it would go the other way. Anyway, that way I can have two printers going on at once. Now, the idea here is for me to design this. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long. It's not that complicated. And um, 
and then start printing out and we'll see how it goes. So, designing is done. I'm quite sure I'm gonna need a few tweaks here and there, but for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print everything. I'm gonna print the kind of like hinges, the filament guides in PLA, just to make sure that tolerances are fine. I'm printing those in PLA on the Alpha YZ20. I have the CR10S Pro printing the base, the, the base bowl holder, the first one at the bottom. That's printing in PEG. I'm hoping that I won't need to modify um, measurements because that's going to take like eight hours to print i kind of did them in a way that i don't need supports to print there's just going to be bridging and bridging should be fine um and that's it uh, i won't be working on anything else because i don't want to divert my attention to anything else and yeah we'll see how this goes i'm going to print them test them out if it works we'll just head on printing everything in PEG. the reason why i'm printing everything in PEG is because PEG has a glass transition temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. Now, every time I heat up and dry filament, I usually use 70 degrees. So that should work fine, I guess, testing, and then we'll see how it goes. Day two, ladies and gents. Um, lots of printing was done yesterday. So we have the bottom part and the top part. Now, the bottom part fits perfectly. Kind of swivels. There's no, no drag pretty much at all. Oops, it fits a one kilo spool easily and obviously it fits the smaller spools. However, if you use the smaller spools, then you can use this at the top to fit another spool. Now this, it kind of fits, um, tolerances are a bit tight. You can also put the other spool on top and that we have to independently swiveling spools and while you're printing they're being dry what i'm gonna do though is i'm printing another one of these using slightly less filament um, and also increasing tolerances because i don't want no friction at all i just want it free floating so that would be done i also added and you can probably see here no you can't hold on let me get this out of the way i added a ptfe pneumatic coupler over here so the idea this is a pass-through ptfe i'm looking i had some piece there it is so i have the ptfe tube which simply just slides all the way through and then what i'm simply going to add on the corners is what it's what i mentioned before are these things here so this is just a filament guide because i want three of these like one every 90 degree angle so the filament will come out turn before it exits the uh the food dehydrator and that should give that sort of probably about 60 centimeters worth of filament uninhibited drying area uh it has nothing going uh it has nothing like connected to it so it's just completely drying out before it exits and this should work all that's left now is printing the top part which is going on the cr 10s pro and then printing a few of these. Um, we'll print one out, try it out, and see how it goes. So all parts are finally printed. Um, we have the two spool holders, which are there. You have the top one, which moves freely, independently to the bottom one, which also moves freely. And there's very little drag. And 
I'm actually happy with that result. Now, the last few parts already, which are these things right here. These are the guys which I want to attach to the side. So you print this part, then you print this part, which goes on top. And then you glue this part on top, like this. Once it print everything without supports. Um, and these just glue on the side. So, to be completely honest, I'm not sure these are needed. Um, now that I see them, I might have just overcomplicated something which wasn't needed. Uh, which is what engineers do, I think. I'm not sure. Anyways, um, I'm gonna attach these anyway. Then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna set it to, um, to cook the filament overnight for 10 hours. I want to see exactly how the PEG survives all of this. So tomorrow I can then set a print to to run with some nylon. And that's when we'll finish the video and we'll know if this works or if it was just a flop. We're back, it's all done. It's finally complete. And this thing has been going now for nine hours. It's been drying uh, two spools of uh, MetaHackers Pro Nylon series for nine hours. Everything is still intact, all the parts are still there. Um, I've checked the PEG parts in here and they're still solid, so everything's fine. So PEG will work fine. What I did notice is that when you put spools in here, inside here, right in the center, it's still relatively cool. It's not as warm as outside here, which brings back my theory that the outside obviously dries up quicker than the inside. So like this, as the spool is unwinding itself, is just becoming even drier. Now I've pulled some filament out. So this was already out, it's nice and cold. So this, this was definitely, um, it, it's, it's full of moisture and it's very flexible. As soon as you pull out, look at that. As soon as you pull out this, this is much, much tougher. You can feel that it's much more solid. It's not as flexible, meaning it's completely dry. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hook it up to the pulse and print something, see how it goes. There you have it, it's printing, it's working, it's working beautifully, and I'm happy. So, one thing to note, if you're gonna put the, like the side guides that I did, there is a bit of resistance, but if you have a Bontech extruder, not to worry, it'll do just fine as it is doing right now, uh, because the pulse does come in with a Bontech extruder. If you don't have a Bontech extruder and you feel a bit of resistance, just don't use the side guides and just do it directly out there's very little resistance there so it should work just fine with a normal extruder okay so that is it for me today first project done now on to the next project i will leave links to the files everything in the video description below if you're interested in getting yourself some meta hackers pro nylon series for some extra tough dts like i'm doing with max the megapod i will leave links in the video description and also for the pulse as you can see extremely quiet printer i do recommend that is it for today make sure you like comment share subscribe and as always happy making guys